Hello, welcome to Keir E. Nero Diaries. Um, a few days ago, on the 5th of June, uh, Robert Llewellyn posted a really interesting um, uh, video on his fully charged show. And if you're an electric vehicle owner or thinking of uh, getting an electric car, you may well know of this, uh, this, this YouTube channel. He's I think he's got about a million subscribers and he's, uh, he runs these big open day uh, sort of electric vehicle festivals, if you like. Um, and uh, yeah, I think he's probably done more to uh, uh, make people aware of electric vehicles than, than anyone else. Uh, so, you know, great, great guy. Um, so he did this uh, video where he's, he, he's, he's actually standing in a field somewhere near his house and he's talking about lots of different things and one of the things he talks about is vehicle to grid. Now I have had some involvement in vehicle to grid from a telecommunications perspective because there's a lot of data that passes between the car and the grid because uh, of course at some point there, there has to be reconciliation between you know who owes who for what so uh, the idea that Robert Llewellyn talks about is that um, if you own a, a normal car uh, an internal combustion engine car like any other car 96 percent of the time it's just sat there not not doing anything whereas in a vehicle to grid world or bi-directional charging world your car could be earning you money in theory now I'll say there's been a lot of trials of vehicle to grid in sort of you know 20 and 30 cars all being plugged in, taking little bits of power back out of the battery at peak hour to try to smooth out the demand on the grid, which is a win-win situation because, say, having been involved in um, what we call the Internet of Things for my work, I've been to conferences um, over the years and I, I remember going to a smart grid conference in, in Poland about 10 years ago and uh, energy companies talking about the cost of providing power at peak times being 20 to 30 times higher than it is for uh, providing power in the middle of the night. So it's really important if we can find some way to smooth out the demand and of course if you have a situation that Robert Llewellyn is envisaging where there are a million say for argument's sake electric vehicles on the roads of the UK and uh, people come home from work at night they've done their driving for the day they plug in the grid takes you know a few kilowatt hours out of the car and then puts it back again uh, after midnight while, when when you're asleep um, so this this could be very beneficial for sort of reducing carbon emissions and of course for the electric vehicle owner it could also be very interesting from the perspective of um, maybe getting your charging for free or you know having some kind of discount on your electricity bill for power that you give back at peak time anyway how that's going to be worked out is 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 still a long way off and Robert Llewellyn says it's all going to be so simple and easy well yeah it's not actually uh, because and the other thing he talks about is that with a million cars on the road we could provide 10 gigawatts of power uh, which would be equivalent to about two and a half times what the new nuclear power station at Hinkley Point C is supposed to be able to produce when it's built but of course 10 gigawatts with a million vehicles would mean that each car is putting 10 kilowatts back in to the grid and well that's about 20 percent of a 50 kilowatt um, uh, 50 kilowatt hour battery and 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 16 percent of uh, of the key e Nero, for example um, so really I, I i don't know i mean not not many cars can actually support bi-directional charging the e Nero doesn't i don't think the hyundai products do i know nissan does and uh, robert llewellyn does talk about tesla actually having the capability to do this uh, people have done a breakdown of their cars and found that uh, you know the, the charging equipment in the car is capable of bi-directional charging although they haven't actually enabled that yet so anyway vehicle to grid very interesting problem is what does it do or what would it do to your battery and a lot of people are quite worried about the effects of constantly every night a little bit going out and a little bit coming back in again now there's been an awful lot written about uh, battery longevity and how long will our electric vehicle batteries last and uh, there's a website called Battery University where it 
you know, if you're really interested, there's just pages and pages of stuff on how lithium-ion batteries work and what happens when you charge them from, say, 10% to 90%. And anyway, it, it's there's an awful lot of math involved, and I don't understand it. I'm not a battery engineer or, or an expert in any way. But a lot of this data has been sort of simplified for sort of ordinary folk like me. And uh, there's a website uh, called Clean Technica, uh, which you may have heard of. And if you Google the secret life of an EV battery, you'll find this interesting little chart where obviously they've got the information from other sources where research has been done on you know thousands and thousands of trials of batteries where they charge them from 20 percent to 80 percent and they see how many times they can do that before the uh, range of the vehicle drops below 85 percent well I'm going to try to put this chart up here now um, but as you can see hopefully um, it says that if you were to charge between 25% and 85%, you could do that 4,500 times before you, uh, your, your range degraded uh, below 85% of the original range of the vehicle. I mean, look, the eNero WLTP official range is 455 kilometers, but we know it's a bit less in winter and we know it's a bit less when you drive it hard on the motorway. So let's, for argument's sake, Imagine that eNero just has a range of 400 kilometers. So that's about 240 miles, which is sort of realistic. So if you charge it, to, uh, if you if you add 60% of charge, you're adding 240 kilometers. Now, according to this research, you should be able to do that 25% to 85% charge four and a half thousand times, say, before you see uh, a degradation in range that takes you below 85% of the original range. So 4,500 times 240 is just over a million kilometers, right? So, I mean, it's crazy who, you know, that that's going to go beyond the life of the vehicle. But the interesting thing is, is that the, the different charging regimes result in different outcomes in terms of the longevity of the battery. Obviously, there, are, there must be many factors involved in, in, in the battery life, such as, you know, how many times you rapid charge it, um, how many times you let it go really low, how many times you take it up to 100%. But they've got, you know, the other data is quite interesting. So if, for example, you're, uh, you, you let your battery run down quite low, um, say below 10%, and then you charge it to 100% every time, you should be able to get 1,500 uh, charge cycles out of it and apparently that's how they d d uh, determine what their warranty is on the vehicle okay that they they're confident that you can charge it from low to, to full uh, 1500 times and uh, you're still going to be you know, have a usable vehicle basically um, but even if you do that which is a worst case scenario um, uh, and you're putting 400 kilometers in the case of the Nero on every every time, you're still going to end up with a with a life of 600,000 kilometers, which is like 350,000 miles. So come on, you know who's going to be worried about that? Now, if you take the the numbers down, I don't know if you can see on the chart here, but um, if you go, for example, just from 65 to 75 percent, so it's just 10 percent you add and you. So it's a bit like vehicle to grid charging, or we imagine it would be. You take a little bit out of the car and then they put it back in again. Um, you can do that 12,000 times before you see uh, the range degrade below 85%. So 12,000 times, and in the eNero, 10% would be, say, 40 kilometers. You, th that's still going to give you 480,000 kilometers. And by the way, 12,000 times charging it up and down is 33 years. So, you know, I mean, this is, <laughs> you know, I, I don't think battery life is going to be a problem. And I don't think vehicle to grid is really going to impact the life of the battery. Uh, interestingly enough, as a, <clears throat> being the anorak that I am, <clears throat> I have been recording my, uh, every time I plug in, I, I make a note of it and I keep a spreadsheet. How sad is that? Uh, and uh, in the last 10 and a half thousand kilometers, I've plugged it in 44 times. Okay, now 32 times have been at home, and I just use a granny cable, so I'm charging at 2.2 kilowatts, which is, you know, very, very slow, I know. Um, seven times I've used public AC charging, 
and then five times I've used rapid DC charging when we've been on, on trips. So if I divide um, 10,500 kilometers by the number of times I've charged it, which is 44 times, I end up with 240 kilometers, which is the kind of number of kilometers you get when you go from 25 to 85 percent. Now that's my regime. I, I tend to charge up once a week, uh, unless we're going on a long trip anywhere. I never bother taking it above 80%. In fact, it's going to be plugged in this evening. And that'll be the first time it's been plugged in for about eight and nine days. Uh, now, obviously, not everybody uh, follows the same regime every time. You, you plug in as you need it for your lifestyle. So one day you're going on a long trip, you charge to 100%. You run it back down again. You may use DC charging while you're out, and then for the next few weeks, you're just doing you're back to doing 20 to 80 percent to cover your local commutes and whatever you need to do. So, it, the real world charging uh, uh, life of a battery is going to be a mixture of all the numbers that are in that chart. But it looks as if that if you have a battery that's got you know thermally managed, like the Tesla batteries are, and uh, the Kona, the Hyundai, and the and, and, and the Kia products and to be quite honest most new EVs now <clears throat> then you know you're certainly not going to have a problem with you know what, what I would call micro charging and of course although I say I've plugged in 44 times uh, over the last 10,000 kilometers I've actually plugged in more often than that because since January we've had a brand new Lidl I think I've mentioned it before and when we go uh, to, to the shop we we plug in it's just a level 2 uh, AC charger 7.2 kilowatts um, we're in the shop for I don't know anything from 20 minutes to 40 minutes depending on what we're doing and I've sort of made a note that every time we go there we um, we get between five and eight percent. So I guess that's a bit like micro charging or like vehicle to grid would be. Uh, I'm just charging it up a little bit, although I'm obviously not then, you know, plugged in to have it taken out by the electricity company. Anyway, it, it's kind of interesting. So I suppose really to my 44 charges, I should add another 15 because I've, I reckon I've been to little about 15 times since January. Anyway, uh, that's just a uh, but a, a subject I found interesting, Robert Llewellyn says they're going to do a much more detailed video soon. Um, and in fact, the e Nero is just coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Mrs. e Nero bringing the car back. I've waffled on enough. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you liked it, please click that a like and uh, subscribe even better. Bye.